Here on Chat News, it's time to focus once again on your money. Yes, it's Wealth Wednesday. To my left is Shandy Froze, an investment advisor with TD Wealth. She's here today to talk about how our finances can impact our mental health. Now, this is something I've never even thought about before, finances and mental health. And I know mental health is, is something that we all deal with, and financial uh, pressures and stuff are things that most people deal with. How did this topic come together for you? Yeah, absolutely. So mental health is something that's really important to me. I've had several family members struggle with that uh, and so I like to bring that topic along with finance together uh, because finance is also something I'm really passionate about so bring the two together because they are something that every single person uh, will experience and okay. at one point in time all right so the two topics we need to talk about are subjective and objective stressors so let's start with objective stressors what are the objective stressors to watch out for okay so yeah there's there's several different things that will impact uh, your financial financial health and uh, your uh, mental health when you're looking at finance. Uh, and so objective stressors are going to be your uh, inability to meet current financial obligations. Okay. Okay. And so things like you have a high debt level and so inability to maybe make minimum payments uh, or manage household expenses uh, or maybe struggling to save for long or short term goals. So many things we can do to kind of help with those things, but I'll give you two. Uh, the first is financial mindfulness. So we want to make sure we're taking stock of our overall finances and look at what do we have coming in and what do we have going out. And so when we can better understand where we're overspending, we can kind of make some headway. And so there's lots of things that you can do to gain that financial mindfulness. Um, there's apps out there now which are super handy. I like to do mine manually. And so I have an Excel spreadsheet. Right. I will look at every single week and I look to see, okay, where am I overspending and, and uh, what other category can I reduce so I can still make sure I'm on my, my I, I guess, roadmap to my goal. Uh, the second piece is education. And so okay. this can be a bit more daunting. Uh, sometimes people don't know what questions to even ask. And so uh, lots of resources though, we can go online. The Government of Canada website actually has some really good resources to show you how to pay down debt. Uh, also how to build a budget, lots of different things. Um, one thing we often forget though is that we all have bank accounts. We mm -hmm. all deal with a financial institution. Utilize them. So make an appointment with a personal banker. You can get them to review your finances even if you don't know the questions to ask, you can ask them to educate you, give yeah. you a Banking 101 course. And so they can actually go through and explain things to you and see if maybe you can consolidate debt. Maybe you're overspending here. So they can give you some advice to utilize them. It's so important to use a spreadsheet to see your finances right out in front of you yeah. as opposed to think about, oh, do I have this? Do I, do I have that? Okay, Absolutely. subjective, subjective stressors. What are subjective stressors? Yeah, so subjective stressors are really quite interesting uh, simply because we are now looking at something that is ultimately someone's perception of a financial situation. Okay. And so this can vary greatly depending on their upbringing and experiences. And so something that we see quite frequently in our field is someone worrying that they're going to run out of money mm. or looking at their bank account and being uh, having anxiety if it falls below a certain amount. And that amount could be $1,000 for one person or 100000 for another person. Mm. And so it can vary greatly depending on that person's upbringing. So the first thing you want to do is actually understand your relationship with money. Right. So how was it discussed when you were growing up and how did that shape um, how you think about money and what it means to you? And so for me growing up, um, money wasn't really discussed and my dad's motto was easy come, easy go. And so <laughs> <laughs> okay. for me and my personality, yeah. that causes me anxiety to think of it that way. So I educated myself and I was mindful about my money. And I understand that that upbringing, um, money to me means security. And so it's not easy come, easy go, right. or it helps me gain control over that uncertainty, okay. doing those things. So understand your relationship with money and have a financial plan. Yes, the financial plan is huge. So I can't stress this piece enough uh, because the plan really gives you peace of mind. So when we've got clients that are worried about running out of money or maybe they get a big expense and they think uh, maybe their windows need to be replaced or something and they think, can I afford that? Yeah. The plan gives you that answer and the peace of mind. So it takes the stress out of it and so that we can actually see how does that impact your plan or how can we make it work so that we can adjust things. And so it just reframes it and gives you control 
control over your financial future. Well, I tell you, I have a great relationship with money, so I'm sitting here very comfortably listening to what to what you're saying today. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so that's Shandy Froze, an investment advisor with TD Wealth, has been our guest today. Thank you very much. You've given us a lot to think about. Thank you. That's Chad News at noon. We are back at 5 with all the latest for you. Thank you for watching.